Greetings to all our friends. My name is Carl Valinas and I'm the president of the Friends of Maple Grove. Welcome to our second concert for the 2021 season. The Friends of Maple Grove is extremely proud to present to you today our Black History Month concert. Let me begin with the opening lyrics of the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing, by James Weldon Johnson. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty, let our rejoicing rise, high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Those words were written over 120 years ago. It speaks about hope and a new day. After the events of 2020, we all long for a new day. We have certainly weathered the worst and we have survived. Maple Grove Cemetery is 141 years old and we have over 110,000 people who are cared for here. Each has a story to tell. Among them, many notable African Americans who have left us with a glorious legacy. We are dedicating this concert to a few of them. Primus and Lydia Van Dorn, who were founding members of the Allen African Methodist Episcopal Church in Jamaica, Queens. Victoria Earl Matthews, who was born into slavery and became a noted author, newspaper woman, settlement worker, and activist. Recently, we discovered that her mother, Caroline Smith, is buried with her and is revealing a harrowing story of how she fought to free Victoria from slavery. Two young African-American veterans who fought in World War I, members of the colored troops who proudly served their country Edward Engance Ganier and Everett V. Daniels, and Millie Tunnel, who came to Maple Grove Cemetery in 1896 at the age of 114. She was born into slavery and in her biography mentioned meeting President George Washington. Millie was laid to rest here at Maple Grove Cemetery 125 years ago in an unmarked grave. We are in the process of erecting a memorial marker over her grave and it will be unveiled at the upcoming Juneteenth concert. So please stay tuned for further updates. There are just a few of the many incredible African Americans who are here at Maple Grove. We have been creating lectures about many of them, so please continue to visit our YouTube channel for these wonderful profiles. We cannot thank you enough for your support and encouragement. We are in the middle of our annual membership drive. Application forms can be found on our website. Please consider renewing your membership or becoming a new member for the first time. As you see, your support funds many wonderful programs and events. I want to thank our board member and community concert chair Celeste Chow for making this concert possible. I wish to thank our wonderful singers Barbara Brown, Paulette Copin, and David Mitchell. Also our pianist Naoko Akta and special guest pianist Santiago Preciado. Thank you my friends and enjoy the concert. So the first piece, Lord, I Just Can't Keep From Crying, is arranged by Margaret Barnes. It's a well-known Negro spiritual. Margaret Barnes was born in 1913. She died in 1972. She was a composer with a mission. She was raised in an environment that not only encouraged her interest in music of all sorts, but instilled in her a deep commitment for her community. She was a music prodigy, and by age 13, she had begun to already compose. She won awards in piano and composition. In addition to classical music, Barnes ventured into popular, 
popular music. Many of her songs confronted actually social issues. So as the civil rights movement gained momentum, Barnes became a tireless promoter of African-American artists. She also founded the Margaret Barnes Chamber Music Society, which was dedicated to establishing a canon of art music by African-American composers. The death of Martin Luther King Jr. deeply affected Margaret Barnes, and in the 1960s, she composed several works dedicated to his legacy as a crusader for civil rights. In addition to her songs and instrumental music, Margaret Barnes dedicated a great deal of her time as a composer to creating modern arrangements of traditional African-American spirituals. Lord, I Just Can't Keep From Crying is one of those spirituals, and it's part of a song cycle entitled Five Creek Freedmen Spirituals. Margaret Barnes was a musician committed until her final days to promoting the music of African-American composers. The second piece, entitled Grief, is by William Grant Still, who lived from 1895 to 1978. Still was known as the Dean of African American Composers. He began to study the violin at age 14 and taught himself to play a number of other instruments, excelling at the cello and oboe. He was inspired by the career of Samuel Coldridge Taylor, to become a composer of concert music and opera. William Grant Still's career was comprised of many firsts. He was the first African-American composer to have a symphony performed by a professional orchestra in the United States at Carnegie Hall in 1935. He also became the first African-American to conduct a major symphony orchestra in the United States when he led the Los Angeles Philharmonic in 1936. In the world of opera, his Troubled Island was the first by an African-American to be performed by a major opera company, the New York City Opera, in 1949. 
Still's compositions from the mid-1930s show the jazz band as a major influence on his eclectic musical style. Although he did not write a large quantity of works for solo voice, he set many of the great poets of the Harlem Renaissance, including Paul Lawrence Dunbar, Langston Hughes, and County Cullen. His most ambitious work, probably, for voice and piano is the song cycle, Songs of Separation. Velvet Shoes is written by Hale Smith. Hale Smith lived from 1925 to 2009. He was one of America's finest composers. He enjoyed a long and fruitful career in music as an arranger, editor, pianist, and educator. He began playing piano at the age of seven. He eventually went on to study composition and earned both a bachelor's and master's degree in music. Smith was heavily influenced by jazz music and he spent quite a bit of time arranging jazz comp compositions and performing as a jazz pianist. His jazz endeavors occupied much of his time, so creating classical music, which really was his first love, became especially important. Smith wrote solo pieces, duos, chamber ensembles, string orchestra works, large orchestral works, compositions for soloists and orchestra, band, jazz ensembles, choir, and incidental music. This piece, Velvet Shoes, is the fourth piece in a song cycle about the seasons entitled Valley Wind. Velvet Shoes represents winter, and it was composed in 1952.
Two songs for Julie Ju was composed by Noel de Costa. Noel de Costa lived from 1929 to 2002. He was a Nigerian Jamaican composer, jazz violinist, and choral conductor. De Costa was also a co founder of the Society of Black Composers. He was an accomplished violinist, playing his own works as well as both classical and jazz music. He played on albums by Les McCann, Roland Kirk, Roberta Flack, Donnie Hathaway, Eddie Kendricks, and others. He spent his early school years in the West Indies and New York City. He received a BA in music from Queens College, an MA in theory and composition from Columbia University, and he received a Seidel Fellowship in composition and a Fulbright Fellowship to study with Luigi Dalla Piccola in Italy. He began teaching in 1961. His first music sector poetry was Tambourines by, by Langston Hughes. De Costa's works are marked by an infusion of elements of jazz, Caribbean music, and African music. And it's all in the framework of Western classical music. With Julie Ju, you can feel all of those elements. De Costa wrote music that drew from the American classical tradition, spirituals, and African folk music. He also set poems by Langston Hughes, Gwendolyn Brooks, County Cullen, and others. And now, two songs for Julie Jew. Julie, she makes me laugh. She 
The Negro spiritual is one of the most beloved expressions of joy, sorrow, hope, and despair, always expressing a strong commitment to God and the hope for a better tomorrow. These folk songs were created and performed by African Americans during slavery. Originally, these songs were sung without accompaniment. 20th century African American composers like H.T. Burley, Hall Johnson, Margaret Bonds, and Lawrence Brown not only created their own new arrangements of spirituals, but also influenced the work of European and American mentors with whom they studied. I have chosen four arrangements of Negro spirituals, Water Boy, Hold On, Sit Down Servant, and Is There Anybody Here? Don't you tire, every run's going 
but Jesus, I want to know if you love my Lord. When I was blind and could not see, King Jesus brought the light to me. And when every star refused to shine, I know King Jesus will be mine. Is there anybody here who loves my Jesus? Anybody here who loves my Lord? I want to know if you love my Jesus. I want to know if you love my Lord. Well, brethren, this world is a wilderness of woe. So let us all to glory go, cause religion is like a blooming rose, and none but him who feels it knows that none but the righteous, none but the righteous, none but the righteous shall see God. Is there anybody here? The first piece is called the non which was composed or published in 1907, and it translates to English as none the equal. And then the second piece will be the more famous entertainer. But both are very beautiful melodies. I hope you enjoy them. Thank you.
Agnus Dei by William McCoy is an iteration of part of the Roman Catholic Mass and other Christian liturgies, which uses the title Lamb of God. The text is based on John 1 verse 29, in which St. John the Baptist, upon seeing Jesus, proclaims, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Sung in Latin, the lyrics in English are, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Home at Last by Hall Johnson is a spiritual of lament in which the mourner, preacher, and sinner have each found a home by joining the band with the angels. Johnson was an African-American composer and arranger of African-American spiritual music. Yeah. <laughs> 
Stars by Henriette Davison is a dreamy musical interpretation of a poem of the same title by Langston Hughes. Hughes, who lived from 1901 to 1967, was an African-American poet, social activist, novelist, playwright, and columnist, also known as the Poet Laureate of Harlem, of the Harlem Renaissance. A birthday song by Hall Johnson is a whimsical interpretation of Christina Rossetti's poem with the same name. This unlikely collaboration between an African-American composer and British poet is an illustration of how art transcends time and place. The partnership occurred across the sea and over time, over a lifetime as 
Johnson was only six years old when Rossetti passed away. Despite the song never ever making it to print, it was shared with me by my teacher, Dr. Linda Elliott, whom I remember by singing it today. According to hymnary.org, he's got the whole world in his hands, is an anonymous spiritual which rose out of the African American oral tradition and has become one of the most widely known and loved spirituals sung everywhere. Like other songs arising out of an oral tradition, the song has many variations in both text and tune. The version I will, sh I will share with you, arranged by Moses Hogan, is one of many adaptations. Hogan, an African-American pianist, composer, arranger of choral music, and conductor of international renown, was best known for his settings of spirituals. You and me. 